This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be discussing why you need a init.py file in your code or what it actually does. And I'm not talking about the initializer when you have a class, for example, a class called car, here you create an initializer, you type in def init and you'll have your initializer. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about the init file that you will see inside projects that looks like this, .py. You're going to see this in projects, but what does it do and how do we use it? Well, to explain all of that, I'm going to delete what I have inside main.py and I'm going to delete this init.py file because what we're going to do next is create a package. And to do so, we're going to type in new directory and we're going to call this connections because I want to have a package that takes care of all the different kind of connections. Maybe we want to connect to Wi-Fi. Maybe we want to connect via mobile data. I want this package to handle each one of those cases. So this package is going to contain two different modules. One's going to be called Wi-Fi and the other one's going to be called mobile. And to keep things as simple as possible, they're going to contain simple methods. Here we can type in def connect with mobile data. That's going to return none because it will be a silly print statement that says connected through mobile data. And that's going to be the only function that we will put inside our mobile module. Then moving on to the Wi-Fi module, we will change this part to Wi-Fi. Then we can type in connected through Wi-Fi. So each module takes care of its own functionality. But before we actually do anything else, it's important that we also mark our connections package as a package because right now it's literally just a folder that contains different modules. But we want Python to recognize this as a package. And to do so, we need to specify the init.py file. And in PyCharm, and I think also in Visual Studio Code, you'll notice that your folder is going to have a small circle inside of it because now it's defined to be a package. A package is literally any folder that contains this init.py file. We don't even need the other modules to define this as a package. What's important is that we have the init.py file. And this file will be run every time you import your package. So this is a great place to add some setup code. For example, you can type in something such as connections package is being initialized. And with that, we can go to our main script and we can import connections. So here we can type in from connections imports let's say Wi-Fi. So this will import the Wi-Fi module from the connections package. And with that, we can refer to the functionality by typing in connect with Wi-Fi. And when we run this, you'll see that the connections package is being initialized because we had to access Wi-Fi through the package, which has its init.py file. And then we managed to connect to that Wi-Fi. And there are several different ways you can import from a package. This was just one of them. The other way would be to type in import connections.wifi as your alias, so you can refer to it. So here you can type in w.connectwithwifi and that would work as well. Or obviously you can type in from connections.wifi, import connect with Wi-Fi if you want to use that functionality directly. Connect with Wi-Fi and that will work just fine as well. Now this message is actually quite annoying, so I'm just going to remove it from the init.py file. And with that, we're going to move on to the next subject, star imports. Right now, if we were to type in from connections, import star, what you're going to notice is that we're not going to get anything back. We cannot refer to Wi-Fi and use its method, which is connect with Wi-Fi. This will not work. We're going to get a name error because we did not define how the star import should work. At the moment, this will only work if we refer to a specific module, such as Wi-Fi. If we do that, then we're going to get all of the methods or functions or variables from the Wi-Fi module, and that will work as expected. Now we're connected through Wi-Fi. But if we want to get everything back directly from the package, we're going to have to define that behavior. And to do so, we need to go back to our init.py file and we need to define all. And here we can define what we want to be visible when we use the star import. For example, maybe we only want the mobile module to be visible. So here we can type in the name of the module without the extension so that the next time we actually do this from connections import star, 
you'll notice that we can refer to mobile and its functionality, and that will work just fine. Although we cannot refer to Wi-Fi because we did not include that in all. And something else we can do here is import functionality directly from a module. For example, from .wifi, since this is a relative import, we can import the connect with Wi-Fi function. And now we can include it inside here so that when we go back to main.py and we import everything from connections, everything that we included in all will be part of this star import, which means we can directly refer to connect with Wi-Fi now because we included that in all. Now, when we run this, what we're going to get back is that we connected through both of them using two different approaches. So whatever functionality you want to be part of the star import, include it inside all. And that's going to help filter which functionality should be visible to whoever is using this package. So yeah, to quickly summarize this video, we used the init.py file to mark a folder as a package. And we also use it to run any necessary setup required for the package, because once again, the init.py file will always be run when we refer to it to import any functionality. And to filter what kind of functionality we get back when we use the star import, we specify the all variable, which allows us to mark which parts of the package should be imported when we use that star import. But yeah, that just about covers everything I wanted to talk about in today's video, practically just the basics on what the init.py file actually does. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any useful examples for it or whether I missed anything that was important regarding it. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.